What are some secrets? What is the best way to prepare for a private pilot check ride? Hey everyone, Jason Shepard here of m0a.com and you are listening to the Private Pilot Podcast brought to you by our number one rated online ground school, groundschoolacademy.com. You can actually head over to m0a, m-z-e-r-o-a trial.com to check that out and learn more. Take a two week free trial, no strings attached, no credit card needed of our online ground school. So you can check that out there. All this month, really, we're, it is mock check ride May that we are diving into across not just all four of our podcasts, the private pot podcast, the instrument pot podcast, the commercial pot podcast, and the CFI certificated flight instructor podcast, all of which you can find on iTunes, just like you found this podcast. If you're watching us on YouTube or Facebook as a video, you can find those on iTunes and throughout our channels as well. Across all those channels, we'll be doing mock check rides just like this. So if you want to dive more into that, you want an instrument level, commercial level, CFI level mock check ride, we're gonna just give away a few of those check ride questions here. Obviously, if you wanna take it even further, you know we have our check ride series books, past your private pilot check ride, past your instrument pilot check ride, available on Audible. I'm working on the audiobook, making strides each uh, Friday, working on the audiobook for uh, past your commercial pilot check ride as well. And, and Tom, who helps to edit these podcasts, is also working on a revamp of that book as well. So just a lot of really great things happening. Excited to share those with you here. What I wanna do, is I just wanna dive through three actual FAA check ride questions. It'll actually be a good sample of how the audiobook works so you can kind of see that. I'll ask the question, let you think it through, pause for a second. It's hard for me to be quiet for a long period of time, as you probably know, but I'll do my best to be quiet, let you think about the correct answers here as we work through that. So let's dive into it here together with question number one. Question number one, what are the three P's of risk management? What are the three P's of risk management? And you might be thinking, Jason, is this really a private pilot level question? It is. And I'm telling you, anytime the FAA creates their own acronym, the I'm safe, decide, pave checklist, when the FAA, the three P's is one of those, when the FAA makes their own acronyms, the FAA examiners, the DPEs, designated pilot examiners, they could and very likely will be quizzing you on them. What are the three P's of risk management? They are to perceive, to process, and to perform. You first must perceive the hazard. Okay, there's an issue out here. I am going to deal with it. I am looking my oil pressure gauge is low. It's barely out. It's barely low. It's barely outside of the green, pushing into the yellow. But I've perceived a potential hazard that I could be losing my oil pressure, or I could just be losing my oil pressure gauge. I, I see a possible hazard though. I then process. I need to now evaluate the level of risk. Okay, it could just be my oil pressure gauge going out. But what if it's not? What if I am truly having a slow decline right now of my oil pressure and that is what the gauge is indicating? I saw it, I perceived the potential hazard. I'm evaluating the level of risk. What's the level of risk? Well, it's one of two options. The gauge is going bad and there's no issues or there's a very, very serious issue and I am moments, minutes, seconds away from a catastrophic engine failure. Which of the two am I going to choose? I'm gonna choose the latter. I'm gonna always choose worst case scenario. This could happen. I'd rather land and, and hear from the mechanic that my gauge is going bad and know I made the right decision than land in some farmer's field because I pushed on too far. So I've evaluated my level of risk. I'm assuming I am minutes away from a catastrophic engine failure. I am gonna begin performing the risk management. I'm gonna perform the diversion, perform the right course of action for the circumstance, I am gonna start heading towards the nearest airport. In fact, I might even climb a little bit, 
maybe not give it more power, but at least climb a little bit here just to give myself some more cushion while everything is normal, while everything's working. In fact, I'm not even gonna start a descent for the airport. I'm gonna fly right over top of the airport and I'm just gonna kind of spiral down. That way I'm 100% sold, guaranteed, I'm going to make this airport. The three P's of risk management. Perceive, process, perform. Next question. And I'm kind of bouncing topics here. You gotta realize on a check ride, it's gonna be very structured. They're gonna follow. When you're talking weather, they're gonna to continue to talk weather for a little bit and then jump topics. Today, we're just gonna to jump topics to kind of plant and see where you're at with everything. What is the difference between category and class? What is the difference between category and class? I'll let you process that one just a little bit here and kind of uh, uh, think your way through it um, as we work through. What are, what's the difference between category and class is what I wanna know. Think of it this way here. Category is airplane. Class is something like single engine land. Category is airplane. Single engine land is the class. Do you follow me? Airplane, single engine C. Airplane, multi engine land. Category, class. The category is airplane. The category could be rotorcraft. The category could be weight shift. They could be different categories, but you get into your classes, single engine land, single engine C, multi engine land, multi engine C. That's what we mean when we say category and class. Let's look at another one here. Let's talk aeromedical for a second. What are the four types of hypoxia? Again, these are all private pot level questions. Don't let these trip you up. If they seem tough, hopefully we're showing some blind spots where you need to work a little bit harder and study a little bit more. What are the four types of hypoxia? better if you can explain them. What are the four types of hypoxia? They are hypoxic hypoxia, hypemic hypoxia, stagnant hypoxia, and histotoxic hypoxia. Hypoxic, hypemic, stagnant, histotoxic. Let me explain each one. Hypoxic hypoxia. This is the most common type that we associate in general aviation. It's the entire reason we have CFR 91211, which is the supplemental oxygen requirements. We fly up, we climb an altitude, there's less oxygen there. We use the plain English term that the air is thinner, and we're not wrong when we say that, there's just less oxygen available. We get hypoxic hypoxia. My body is working, my, my uh, Red blood cells are ready to move the oxygen. Everything is good, could be good to go, yet the oxygen is not there. My body is functioning fine. The oxygen is not there for my body to transport it to my vital organs. Hypoxia is a deficiency of oxygen to the vital organs. Hypoxic hypoxia. We then have hypemic hypoxia. With hypemic hypoxia, with hypemic hypoxia, think of hypemic and anemic. In hypemic hypoxia, the oxygen is there, but it's not able to attach itself to the red blood cells because of some condition, like anemia could be that condition. Hypemic hypoxia. The oxygen is there, the red blood cells are unable to transport it because of some condition. Next, we have stagnant hypoxia. Stagnant hypoxia is caused, uh, this is the reason air show performers wear G-suits. G-suits are nothing more than just tight, it's a tight suit around the legs to keep the blood in the torso, to keep it up towards the vital organs, particularly the eyes, the brain, that's where you wanna keep that oxygen um, uh, transported to so all those tissues work. Stagnant hypoxia is the pooling of the blood. When the blood that is oxygenated, you can take oxygenated blood, red blood cells, that's what I want, but if it pools in your legs, it does no good for my brain, for my eyes, for my lungs, it doesn't do me any good. You follow me with that? Stagnant hypoxia. And lastly, histotoxic hypoxia. 
Let me use the example of alcohol consumption. Now we know we air is bottle to throttle, we know all that stuff, right? But just it, it provides a good example. When we're talking about oxi oxygen, oxygen must attach itself to our red blood cells. This is why when we drink alcohol, we have something called a blood alcohol content because the alcohol attaches itself instead to our red blood cells, which then in turn means if alcohol is attached to the red blood cells, not as much oxygen can attach itself to the red blood cells. Histotoxic, the oxygen is there. However, the red blood cells have something else attached to them, in this case, alcohol attached to it, which limits our ability to transport oxygen because instead we're transporting alcohol all around the bloodstream. The four types of hypoxia, hypoxic hypoxia, hypemic hypoxia, stagnant hypoxia, histotoxic hypoxia. Again, three private pilot level questions, honestly. They're private pilot level questions, and I hope they're not a surprise to you. And maybe this was challenging for a private pilot level, but I'm not here to go easy on you. I'm here to hold you to a higher standard. Honestly, I'm not even here to help you pass a check ride. I'm here to make you a safer, smarter pilot. And by making you a safer, smarter pilot, you're gonna pass your check ride flying colors. I am here to prep you, prepare you to go flying with your spouse, go flying with your son or daughter, go flying with your best friend, to build a career in aviation, whatever that may be, that's what I'm here to do. You'll pass a check ride because that's what I'm preparing you to do is to be that safe real world pilot. That's why you'll pass that check ride. Listen, I know we're in some crazy times right now, but myself and this M0A family are here to take care of you. Family takes care of family. And during crazy times like that, like this, that is exactly what we need. So please, please, please don't hesitate to reach out to myself or any of the outstanding team members here at m0a.com. Do give us five stars here on iTunes. Check out the other podcasts as well, the Instrument Pot Podcast, the Commercial Pot Podcast, the CFI Podcast. Also check out Pass Your Private Pot Check Ride as an audiobook on Audible. Just one credit, super cheap, uh, so you can enjoy that there. Check out the trial, m0atrial.com. Enjoy the rest of your day, and most importantly, remember, but a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, guys. We'll see ya. Take a two-week free trial of our online ground school and see why Aviation Consumer Magazine named it the top online ground school on the market. The first thing you'll notice is that we never teach to the test. We teach real-world skills that are gonna keep you and your loved ones safe when you fly. Now, it's because of this real-world teaching, you'll pass your knowledge test and your check ride with flying colors. With one membership, you get access to all our courses, plus weekly webinars with myself and this outstanding M0A.com team. It's really like an interactive TV show broadcast from our studio, where you get to interact with a team of CFIs. We also offer live support and email support to make sure you succeed. Now, one thing you'll notice is that M0A is like nothing else on the market. It is truly a flight training community geared towards making you a safer, smarter pilot because a good pilot is always learning. It's much more than a slogan for us. It is truly a mission. So click below and take a two week, no strings attached trial of our top rated private, instrument, commercial, and FOI courses. Once you join our flight training community, I promise you will never want to leave.